Sam Altman, so the head of OpenAI. So he's warning there's no legal confidentiality when using ChatGPT as a therapist. This is on the Theo Vaughn podcast, which is well worth listening to. Here's a quote from Sam Altman. People talk about the most personal shit in their lives to ChatGPT, Altman says. People use it, young people especially use it as a therapist, a life coach, having these relationship problems and asking, what should I do? And right now, if you talk to a therapist or a lawyer or a doctor about those problems, there's a legal privilege for it. There's doctor patient confidentiality, there's legal confidentiality, whatever. And we haven't figured that out yet for when you talk to ChatGPT. So what Sam Altman is warning about is, hey, guys, you are putting a lot of personal information into our models. Careful. So this is the head of ChatGPT saying, careful with this. The reason is, if that information is put into ChatGPT, there is no confidentiality. So in the same way that if I talk to a therapist or a doctor, there's a confidentiality. If I talk to a lawyer, there's a confidentiality. That does not exist within AI, not right now. So that means if OpenAI are asked to provide records, they can legally be forced to do so because they can't say that it's confidential. So what Sam Altman is arguing, he says, here we go, this can create a privacy concern for users in the case of a lawsuit because OpenAI would legally be required to produce those conversations today. And he says, goes on to say, I think that's very screwed up. I think we should have the same concept of privacy for your conversations with AI that we do with a therapist or whatever. And no one had to even think about that a year ago. So what Sam Altman is saying is, he's saying, yes, be careful because we could be legally required to produce your chat conversations. So what you've said to ChatGPT may not be secure. We may be required to release your chat logs. But he's using this as a way to leverage the point that, oh, we need confidentiality. He's trying to get greater privacy and again, legal confidentiality for his model. He's trying to say that what we put in should be treated with the same level of confidentiality as doctors, lawyers, etc., etc. So yeah, he's... Yes, he's warning people and he's saying there's a potential problem here, but he's also using it as a way to push and to lead to a fear so that us as users are pushing on lawmakers to say, hey, we need this to be confidentiality. I'm giving this chat model a lot of secrets. I need this to be confidentiality. So this is an interesting case because it is bringing us closer to concepts of AI having a legal responsibility. So right now, Lots of jobs like lawyers, medical professionals, etc. they will still be safe because a, an AI cannot be held legally responsible. So if I go to a lawyer and I get them to sign off on a contract, I'm basically passing the buck onto the lawyer. That's what I'm paying for. I'm paying to remove the, not fully remove, but to move some of the legal heat to that lawyer in case something goes wrong. Because if I get sued, I can go back to my lawyer and sue that lawyer. You cannot yet sue ChatGPT in that same way. If ChatGPT gives me professional advice, legal advice or medical advice, and it turns out to be wrong, I can't go to ChatGPT and sue ChatGPT because it does not exist as a legal person. It doesn't have personhood potentially. So it should sue OpenAI, but that's a whole different thing. But what Sam Altman is pushing at here, and I think pushing at the edges of it, and it's going to be interesting, is saying... We know we should have similar laws as if you were talking to a therapist, which seems very reasonable from a user point of view. But what this is doing is opening up the question of legal personhood for artificial intelligence. I don't know if he's doing this consciously, but this is en route towards those discussions, which are things that need to be had primarily because our legal systems globally, and not just in the US, but everywhere, do not. They are not equipped to deal with artificial intelligence and the legal systems are going to take a long time to catch up. So we need to start having these questions of, yeah, can an AI be held liable? Maybe, but for it to be held liable, does it need to be a person, et cetera, et cetera. It opens up a whole can of worms and yeah, it's well worth listening to the whole podcast. That's not the only thing we talk about. They talk about a huge amount of things and it's interesting to get that kind of insight into Sam Altman in that unguarded less of a CEO, more of a human being setting. So well worth checking out. Thoughts on the 40 leading AI workers saying AI is about to start hiding its thoughts. Yes. So this is 
This is a reference to a research paper that came out a couple of weeks ago, I think, and it's co-signed by 40 different researchers. And what was telling about it was that it's co-signed by people at OpenAI, people at Anthropic, and people at Meta, I think. Nobody from XAI, because they don't care. <laughs> they nasty. <laughs> so a bunch of these, and Anthropic, did I say Anthropic? I'm sure Anthropic were there. A bunch of these researchers all got together. They co-authored a paper basically saying, right now, the only way we can tell what a, an AI, a large language model is thinking is because they use chain of thought. So you've probably seen this when you use a reasoning model in particular, there will be a little box that pops up and you can see the AI is talking to itself and it would say something like, oh, the user asked me, what's the best way to integrate security into a lovable app? So I'm going to have a think about this and I'm going to look up some things and it will basically have this little internal monologue and you can expand that monologue and you can see the different sections it goes through basically that's called chain of thought and that can be explicitly written into large language models as a way to help them reason basically by having them go through step by step it's been found that large language models get to better answers it helps them to think i'm doing scare quotes here because it's not really thinking it's not really reasoning that's a different question the chain of thought the great thing about chain of thought is we can see what it's doing cool and it also allows them to reach better conclusions. Generally, this is what has allowed all of the increases in the reasoning benchmarks and, and things like the International Math Olympiad It's because they are reasoning through step by step. The problem with this is it uses more tokens. So it is more computationally, it's more work because they are asking many questions and they're doing it all in human language and human language is not that efficient. So if you read one of these chain of thoughts, it is like it's having a little internal monologue. It's bumbling along like, oh, the user asked this. Oh, that's a good question. But it will bumble around to itself and it gets to the answer. So it works. But that's using up a huge amount of additional credits, which uses more energy and it uses more of the system's power. So if you want to make a more efficient AI that uses less electricity, which is the main cost when you're running a model, you want to squeeze that reasoning process down. And one way that may happen is the AIs come up with their own language. There's no particular reason why they have to use human language to, to go through that process. It's just, that's just how they're built at the moment, but that doesn't need to be the case. They may be able to infer a different way of reasoning that is no longer passable by us humans. So we're no longer able to read it. It might just look like gobbledygook. It might just be a string of numbers. We don't know, but that allows it to go through that same process in a much more condensed time and to reach the reasoning conclusion without having wasted all of those tokens. What will happen that the models might work this out themselves because we are using AI to, to help come up with AI algorithms. So there may be a point where the, the AI is like, Hey, why am I using human language? This is dumb. These humans, they talk in circles. It's all over the place. I could do this much more efficiently. And so the training, this is not a conscious thing, but the training will lead to a more efficient route. There's going to be less loss and that will be using potentially a made up language. It might look like a program language. We don't know. We have no idea. So what these researchers, 40 researchers are saying is this is the last time in history, potentially that we have an insight into how these models are thinking because we have chain of thought. So they're saying if we lose that then these models are a complete black box. They're a complete unknown. We put something in and something comes out. What happens in the middle? Don't know. And we cannot even, we cannot even go back and check the process, which is true. They're already a black box, but this gives us some kind of insight into the process they're going through. It doesn't give us much insight into how they're going through that process, but that's a step beyond. So these research is saying we must keep chain of thought in place so that we do not lose control of these AIs. We do not lose control of being able to see their reasoning process, which, so the problem is, <laughs> and this has happened again and again in artificial intelligence, what they are asking for is basically a slowdown. They're saying we should not push on, sorry, we need to keep in place this mechanism, even though it slows everything down, even though it requires more computation, even though it requires more electricity which means we're going to need bigger data centers. We're going to need more electricity. It's going to become more and more wasteful because we're keeping in this old method. What's going to happen though, these people can sign research papers. They can put forward pro proclamations and ethical statements. As soon as one company abandons that, they're going to race ahead because their AI is not going through this 
onerous chain of thought process and instead working things out much faster. And then suddenly, oh shit, that model is 10 times faster and it's using 10 times less tokens. Guess what happens then? Every other company will fall in. So it becomes this brinksmanship basically where you can sign statements, you can write research papers, but as soon as one of these companies works it out and has a model that can reason for cheaper and faster and better, they're going to do it. Noticeably, XAI did not sign this paper or did not, they're not part of this research. So they'll be happy to do it. And if they're going to do it, do you think OpenAI are going to look back at this research paper and be like, oh, we did sign this paper. Maybe we shouldn't do it. No, of course not. Everyone's going to fall in board. So I think it's, it's a nice idea, but like with everything in the slowdown movement, it requires a unilateral decision. It requires everybody, everyone making models to come to that same conclusion not going to happen. Capitalism will prevail, unfortunately, and it will just continue to progress. So I think it's an interesting historical blip, but it's not going to have any actual effect. Cindy asks, what's the name of the paper? Great question. Let me find it for you. The actual paper is very boring. If you actually read it, it's just been turned into a, it's been turned into one of these headlines. Like we won't be able to know what the AI is thinking. We don't know what the AI is thinking anyway. Like this is Chain of thought helps us to, to pretend that we know what's going on. We don't, we have no idea. So is this it? So there's a huge amount of fear around this paper too. So researchers from top AI labs, including Google, OpenAI, and Anthropic warn they may be losing the ability to understand advanced models. They already don't know what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on. Just trying to find the paper. There's a lot of coverage, but hard to find the paper. Here we go. The paper is called Chain of thought mon monitorability. Good God. Chain of thought monitor. The academics are named this one. Chain of thought monitorability. My, that's not a word. A new and fragile opportunity for AI safety. So it's from the UK AI Security Institute, Apollo Research Anthropic, OpenAI, DeepMind, blah, 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 blah. Meta, UC Berkeley, Amazon got a hand on the ball there, et cetera, et cetera. It's written by 40 odd people. It's also endorsed by Ilya Sitskiva and it's endorsed by Jeffrey Hinton. Okay. So they're pulling out the big guns on this one. It's worth reading the paper, but that's my basic conclusion that yeah, sure. Great. It's, it'd be fantastic if we can hold this in place, but the economic reality of it is as soon as one company breaks away from this, it's over and all of these nice words and all of these warnings won't matter. So it's a bit cynical, isn't it?